So, now let's uh, take a quick look at King Caradan. Character preview King Caradan. Okay, so for the first time ever in Rivengard's short history, like relatively speaking, there's some other games out there that have been around a little bit longer than Rivengard, we are going to be revisiting a hero in a hero in a festival. So this is not like a, a new and exclusive unit. However, this is a unit that very few people, me included, were not able to unlock the first time the unit was available in a festival. The reason for that is that Karen was the very first hero that had a festival. He was basically kicking the tradition of festivals off. <laughs> Maybe throws his arrows back on the enemy. That could be could be the case, yeah. So Karen is a unit. Um, there's there's some some uses for this unit, but I, I gotta be honest with you guys I don't think this is one of the strongest units in the game to put it like very oh He's still wearing common armor. I should probably upgrade him to, to at least some rare gear and Here the same we can actually get the bamboo staff of the temple. So now, now he's already like a lot more formidable Carolyn has pretty weak stats in direct comparison to most other mages um, That's especially prevalent like his health is very low and his armor, like I'm speaking from experience here because I ran into a Karadan a couple of times before, he's not very impressive in those uh, regards. The reason for that is actually his passive effect. The, the passive effect is like extra armor for King Karadan. The cool thing about this unit is that for, you get two units for the price of one, that, that, that's already good. And then on top of that, Karadan is not a mage. so you basically get two different kinds of units for the price of one. That makes the deal even sweeter than before. You're getting physical armor in uh, Sir Tristan, which is big, because if you're only going up against enemies that were prepared to battle a unit that uh, has magical armor, so they're doing physical damage, uh, you suddenly have someone who's really capable of fighting back. The other thing is you can see here, Sir Tristan's stats are pretty impressive. Um, we all know that the abilities of units are outscaling the levels of uh, the, 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 the values, the values of uh, the regular units. So if you look at, for example, Queen Akeshu, she's got 1100 health and she's doing 425 magical damage. However, a shade that she summons has 1170 health, so it's roughly the same, um, roughly the same. She's actually not wearing like the best equipment here because I, I switched around equipment earlier for, for um, a guild raid fight. Um, so the shade has like roughly the same health, but it's doing a lot more damage. The shade is doing 1000 damage with every attack. Compare that to the 425 magical damage that Queen Akesha is doing. And you can see that very often in this game, summons are way more powerful than, unit, than units. The reason for that we have explained on a, like on a couple of occasions, it is because units are limited for the time being to gold rank 1. You cannot get them higher at the, at the moment. There's eventually going to be diamond ranks. And then once diamond ranks are dropping, your strongest units are going to be more powerful than, or, or on an equal level than the most powerful summons in the game. So if we look at this with Dogger, for example, the tadpoles have 900 health and 900 damage. Now that's less health than Dogger, but a lot more damage than Dogger does with a regular attack. However, keep in mind, the tadpoles, they evolve into frogs and then the frogs evolve once more into frog warriors and the frog warriors, their stats are blowing Dogger completely out of the water. This may or may not be a wordplay because this is an amphibious uh, creature and, and they are like way more powerful. And the same is obviously going to be true for um, King Caradan. The, the stats of Sir Tristan at the higher levels, if we get this unit to epic and beyond, are way more powerful, way more impressive than the stats of any regular unit in the game. So in that case, this is a very powerful ability. Now, there is... Uh, Th Thundergirl already says, hey, let's just take a look at um, Car uh, Tristan at 50 at the wiki. So, I mean, yeah, we can absolutely do this, of course, guys. So let's just very quickly... Um, this is my work. Uh, let's just qu quickly look at the wiki and then we bring in... Um, here we go. And then we bring in King Caradan, so we can actually look at what this guy is doing. And it's, like I said, it's going to be very, very impressive. Uh, Caradan, here he is. His stats are not through the roof, but then the passive ability 
is eventually going to be here at level 50. 1000, that is health? No, this is damage. Damage, HP, armor. Okay, damage, HP, armor. So he's doing 1000 damage. He's got 5000 HP, that is a lot. And then 3762 3, armor, that is also a lot. Like, even the best units in the game that you have, if you have them at gold rank 1 and level 50, although level doesn't really matter at this point, um, they cannot do this much damage uh, and they cannot have this much armor as well. Let me just go back to my game. Um, here we go. Right. So in, in that case, you definitely get like a really cool deal. The other thing is, you are not losing a turn for summoning Sir Tristan. That is very important. There's a lot of good units that have a very powerful ability, but you're basically giving up a turn to trigger the ability. This is not true for King Caradan. You don't have to like say, okay, I'm gonna skip my one turn and then Sir Tristan is gonna jump out. It's just going to happen automatically. And as we can see here in the description, when Caradan is first targeted in a battle. Now this is also extremely important and you can see that if you've ever played with King Caradan against a unit like Tim Tim or against a unit like Nimrul. Like when Nimrul moves next to Caradan, he's not targeting Caradan. It's just his passive that is kicking in the sword storm or something something like that is the name a blade spin and um, if he hits Caradan with the blade spin it's not a targeted ability he just does this to all adjacent enemies he's just gonna die without triggering um, Sir Tristan the same is true for an ability that just hits every unit on the board so something like Tim Tim's active the flood of crabs so there are a couple of ways to work around the passive ability of Caradan and um, basically make sure that Sir Tristan is not gonna jump out. There's one very big topic um, on the official Discord where people are constantly saying, hey, we, we want this unit to work a little bit differently. And that is if you're playing Guild Raid and the dragon is landing on King Caradan, Sir Tristan is not gonna jump in. So if you're trying to use Caradan as a baiting unit to get the dragon to jump into a dragon nest where you want him to jump to, this is not gonna go very well because like I said, Karen himself doesn't have like a whole lot of health, a whole lot of armor. He also doesn't have physical armor. So the dragon landing, which is doing physical damage, is basically just going to kill him right away. And you do not get um, the advantage of having Sir Tristan on the board. If the dragonlings are coming after King Caradan, it's a different story. Then Sir Tristan is going to jump in and he's going to be able to defend his king. And then on the following turn, he's very often going to be able to take down the dragonlings because he's a warrior as far as I know and the dragonlings are rogues, so you, you're gonna be in a really good position to take on the dragonlings with him. The active ability, Enemy of the Crown, is very interesting. It, it marks an enemy unit, uh, basically you're saying this guy is now the enemy of the crown, and then a, a friendly adjacent unit is immediately gonna attack this unit. Now, this doesn't sound that strong, because you're giving up the turn for King Caradan, and instead you're getting one random friendly unit to do another attack. Generally speaking, this is not a good idea. However, there are some, some uses for this. I can show you the most popular use that I am using um, most of the time. This is um, a very quick collection video that I recorded um, the last couple of days. So what you can do with King Caradan and his active ability is you can use it for power leveling. We can see that here in this fight. This is me against Tripitaka, and the goal was to level Akio. So it's, the goal is not to level uh, Karadan himself, the goal is to level Akio. So you get Akio in position. Then you need to weaken all of the opponents, uh, so we can basically kill them. And now this is the moment when Enemy of the Crown comes in. We're, we're moving here with King Karadan, we're now marking Tim Tim, and then a free adjacent friendly unit. Free is not correct. A friendly adjacent unit, in this case there's only one adjacent unit, and that is Akio, is gonna attack Tim Tim. And since he's taking extra damage, we're bound to guarantee a kill. And then I'm just like playing cleanup with Tanamo to, because I like to win and I don't like to lose. And this way we can get very easily, without like a lot of hassle, um, 200 XP for Akio per turn. This only takes four hours of in like continuous play and you can already get Akio from level 48 to 49. I know this because I did this yesterday evening. It was a lot of fun. I never had this much fun in my life when I played Riven Guard before. But no, in all seriousness, this is actually one of the best ways to improve the time it takes to level one of your powerful units. 
um, the units that don't have an active effect can destroy a lot of enemy units. So if you don't want to like level a unit like Tim Tim or a unit like Tanamo that's just like a clean house and take everybody down, um, using Pelatro to buff the attack of a unit like Akio and then further using Karadan to make sure that he gets two attacks in is a really strong option. Um, you can also play this without Tim Tim, but um, without the setup basically, um, but that's only possible if your Akio no, actually, it doesn't really depend on Akio. This is only possible if you have a Pelato that is very highly leveled or you change and rearrange your unit lineup a little bit and get like Yasmin in because then with Yasmin you can do the same thing. There is some other maps. This is the, the best map for this style of power leveling um, because you have elevation if you're on this tile or on this tile and that means that if Akio now attacks from here, either my Vara or in this case Nasbang, he gets plus 50% damage on top. So if you if you got this lineup here that I have with Pilato, you're buffing Akio. You could also play Yasmin again, but Pilato is better because you can also increase the crit chance. Now Akio is really likely to do a crit hit, and then we can use Karadan, crit the first guy, and just regular attack the second guy. Tanamo is just cleaning house again, like I said. And then you get up to 300 XP per run, and this doesn't take like very long. This just takes a second to set up. Just like tag in Tanamo, rearrange the other units, get rid of the four, fifth unit because we only need four units, and then we can just go in again and just repeat this. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And this way you only need three hours to get Arceo from level 47 to 48 of doing this continuously because Riven Guard is a lot of fun when you want to level your units, as I said before. All right, so, so this is like a very unique appliance that you have for the enemy of the crowd, the active ability of um, King Caradan. Uh, let's just go back in again. And truth be told, that is more or less all there is about this unit. There's, there's really not that much else. Um, I don't think that this unit is very strong in PvP. I don't think that this unit has like a lot of use in guild raid. The best use in guild raid is if you're in over your head against legendary dragons, you can have Karadan um, bait the attack of one dragonling because then the passive kicks in and we see um, Sir Tristan come out. And then there's a second attack that he can also tank either himself or um, again Sir Tristan if he survives the first attack. So even if you have like a weaker Karadan, you can give two enemy dragonlings something to do. And like a while ago, when our units weren't developed as much as they are right now, because like these days we have like level 50 units mostly across the board, uh, at least like the, mo the most powerful units in the game for guild raid, like Dorga for example, or Kicks, like units like that, then there were some encounters against legendary three dragons, the most powerful legendary dragons, and we just had to give the dragonlings something to do. And something to do was in some cases having a unit that they could kill. So like we have actually seen uh, Thunder use uh, Karadan to, to bait two dragonlings into attacking him instead of attacking, some, uh, attacking somebody else, one of our more important units. So, so that was a use in guild raid. I'm not saying this is like a very likely use that you're going to do this a whole lot, uh, because very often you have some other options and they are just more powerful. He is the only red ranged mage is what Thunder is saying. That's not correct as far as I know, because I think that Balmur is a red mage. And he also has range, but nobody has Balmur. So in that sense, he's the, the easiest to unlock red mage with range. I would agree to that statement. He, he however, is not the only one. Um, but yes, there's only a very, very few uh, people have Balmur. I'm like one of the guys that still hasn't unlocked Balmur. Same is true for Salvo, uh, but he's obviously not a mage. Um, yeah, I don't think there's that much else about Karadan, to be honest. Um, I would say the unit is fine. I don't think it is super exciting. It's kind of fitting that it was the first unit that was um, released in a festival. I think that the unit is extremely balanced. This unit is by, by absolutely no stretch of the imagination too powerful. Um, he, he does have some very unique skills. I would actually love to see some of his skills recycled. I think that the passive is really, really strong, really powerful. It's just that the unit as a whole is not powerful enough to warrant a spot in most of your teams. Now, I know that I'm breaking the heart of Earl of Tolstog right now, who is a, a big, big fan of this unit, and I've actually watched him use Karadan in some guild raid fights. And I have to say, it's, it's not terrible because it was one of the better units that he has at this point in time, 
But it's it's not something that I feel like, wow, this was really impressive. This, this unit is, like I said, not great in guild rate. I don't think it's like super great in arena. The main use that I, I have for him is leveling. And that's basically all I got to say about King Karen. If you guys uh, have some questions about the unit, if you want to see it more in action or something, let me know. We can obviously do this. 